The first thing to note about a compound clip is that it's not a clip that's ready for us to use right away. What we have to do is to select an individual clip or a group of clips, and then right click in the menu, select new compound clip. And then in the pop-up window, we can give it a new name or go with the default name and then hit create. And now, as you can see, all these clips are being transformed into what we call a compound clip. And once a compound clip is created, we can still make changes to the individual clips. So what we have to do is to once again, right click this compound clip, and then in the menu, select open in timeline. This is going to open up a separate tab in the timeline where we can make changes to the content of the individual clips that go into this uh, compound clip. So let's uh, just change this duration real quick. And then once it's done, let's double click timeline one. This will take us back to the existing timeline where this original compound clip exists. Another thing we can do is to bring back all the individual clips. So in case you regret making this compound clip, so let's right click this compound clip and in the menu, select decomposing place and then select use clips only. This, as you can see, is going to bring back all the individual clips that went into this compound clip. One of the most unique things about a compound clip is that the moment we create a compound clip, it is automatically saved as a separate clip in the media pool. So let's say right now we go ahead and delete these two clips. We can simply just drag that compound clip into this timeline and then right click and then in the menu select either opening timeline or decompose in place use clips only uh, to bring back uh, those original clips and make changes to them so the idea is that we don't ever have to worry about accidentally deleting them and not being able to retrieve the compound clip Another cool thing about a compound clip is its space efficiency. So if we look at the original clips, we can see that uh, we're taking out multiple tracks, but a compound clip is only taking up a single track and it's also very nice and clean to look at. Now, perhaps one of the biggest reasons that most of us want to use a compound clip is because we can apply a single change to all the clips that go into a compound clip at once. So uh, in this case, we have two clips that uh, go into this uh, compound clip. And if we go to the inspector panel and change the zoom setting, now this change, as you can see, is going to get applied to both clips uh, at once. Uh, same with uh, special effects. So if we go to, let's say, open FX, uh, and let's just go ahead and drop a, a box blur uh, on top of our compound clip, this box blur effect is going to get applied to the entire content of our compound clip. Now we can also take our compound clip to the fusion page. So let's do that. And let's just, uh, uh, for the sake of this example, just uh, drop a simple text node uh, after our media in node, a uh, media in one node, and let's just write our text here. And this text is going to appear throughout the entire clip. Now, same with a color. So uh, let's take our compound clip right now to the color page. And if we, uh, let's say, make some changes to the color, uh, once again, this change, as you can see, is going to get applied to this entire clip. So the takeaway is that instead of making the same change to individual clips uh, one at a time, what we can do is just to convert them into a compound clip and apply the change once and it's done. Lastly, one lesser known feature of a compound clip is that it allows us to bypass some of the uh, default behaviors in our system. So if you look at our picture right now, uh, you can see that it has black borders on the side. The reason is because our picture's resolution is not the same as our timeline resolution. But if we take our picture uh, to the Fusion page, you can see that it's being displayed okay. And the reason is because Fusion is actually displaying the picture at its original a resolution. So in cases like this, uh, if we actually make a change uh, to this clip in the Fusion page, now you can see that it's going to look a little bit different uh, when we bring it back to the edit page. And this may not be ideal. So what we can do is to turn this clip into a compound clip. And then if we take this compound clip, to the Fusion page, you can see that now they are both displaying this clip at the timeline resolution and any change that you make is going to be reflected exactly on the edit page. Now, by the same token, if we make changes to this clip on the edit page, 
this change, if we take it to the Fusion page, as you can see, is not being translated. So what we can do is that once the change is made on the edit page, we can then turn this clip into a compound clip. And then we can take this compound clip to the Fusion page. Now you will see that this change is being directly reflected on the Fusion page. Okay, so unlike a compound clip, adjustment clip is readily available for us to use. So all we need to do is to find it under effects. And now let's drag the adjustment clip into the timeline. And now the clip is ready. And uh, just like a regular clip, we can lengthen it uh, or shorten it. But uh, as the name itself implies, uh, adjustment clip allows us to make uh, changes, make adjustments to clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip. And also the thing with adjustment clip is that it's not locked into a specific set of clips uh, like compound clips. So we can move it to anywhere else in the timeline. If we go ahead and right now uh, and apply just a quick change through the inspector panel, this change, as you can see, is going to get applied right away to the clip that fall underneath it. And if we move it to another part of the timeline, these changes will get applied immediately to another set of clips. Now, another thing about adjustment clip is that we can also easily copy and paste these changes and apply it somewhere else. So uh, we can uh, simply just copy this clip and then paste it to another part of the timeline. And again, these changes will get applied right away. But unlike compound clip, adjustment clip is not automatically saved in the media pool as a separate clip. So if you want to do that, what you will need to do is to drag and drop the adjustment clip uh, into the media pool and now the adjustment clip is saved as a separate clip and we can easily bring it back into the timeline at any moment and these changes will get applied right away to the clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip. So like we saw briefly earlier, adjustment clip allows us to make changes to clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip. So uh, any settings in the inspector panel, uh, we can leverage that, or we can use open FX effects, drop it on top of the adjustment clip that will also get applied right away to uh, all the clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip. We can also take the adjustment clip into the fusion page and let's just quickly apply some uh, effects here let's do a transform and then let's also bring in uh, a, a blur as well and these changes will uh, as you can see uh, get applied uh, to all the clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip and once again just like a regular clip uh, what we can do is to lengthen or shorten the duration of the adjustment clip and then those changes that we just made, they are still intact. They're still there. We can also change the location of the adjustment clip. And also these changes will remain intact. They will just get applied to different sets of clips. And lastly, we can take adjustment clip to the color page and make changes uh, here as well. And uh, once again, these changes uh, will, these color changes will get applied to all the clips that fall underneath the adjustment clip. So the key takeaway here is that adjustment clip really allows us to prioritize the changes rather than the clips themselves. Lastly, just like a compound clip, adjustment clip also allows us to bypass some of the default behaviors in our system. So let's bring in that same picture again. And now let's bring in an adjustment clip and place it on top of this picture. And then let's take our adjustment clip over to the Fusion page. So now, as you can see, this image is also displayed in the timeline resolution. And also, if we make changes to it, we can see that this change is being directly reflected on the edit page as well. And if we uh, go ahead and make changes to this clip itself, and then if we place an adjustment clip on top of it and take this adjustment clip to the Fusion page, this will help us ensure that whatever changes we made to that original clip is also going to be reflected here on the Fusion page as well. Now, just like adjustment clip, a Fusion composition clip is also readily available for us to use. We can find it under effects. So let's just uh, drag that into our timeline here. But one thing you're going to notice right away about Fusion composition clip is that it's just black. And the reason is because Fusion composition clip is typically used as a placeholder for us to create uh, fusion effects, uh, motion graphics, and then being applied into our editing. 
Now, before we get into that in greater detail, another thing I want to mention here is that we can also come to the media pool, right click, select new fusion composition. This will also allow us to create a fusion composition clip. And now, as you can see that not only do we have a fusion composition clip in the media pool, uh, but also we can just to simply click into it and this will take us right away into the fusion page or we can just go back to the other fusion composition clip in the timeline make sure our playhead is hover over it and then we can simply take it to the fusion page like we said earlier fusion composition clip is really a clean slate for us to build fusion effects so let's just bring in a text node make some quick changes and then we can just take it back to the edit page and you can see that now what we just built here on the fusion page can be applied to any clip that is on the timeline now what if you want to start your compositing using actual clips well in that case uh, on the fusion page you will have to go to media pool and then drag in the actual clips that you want to use uh, for your compositing figure out which one is going to be the foreground and background and then continue to make your changes and uh, work on your effects from there Another question that people often ask is how do I uh, save the nodes that I just used to create that effect so that I don't have to keep building this effect from scratch every time? Well, there are many ways to do that, one of which is to use macro. And the other way I want to demonstrate uh, here is to use grouping. So all we need to do is to select these uh, nodes and then in the menu, go to settings and then uh, select save as. And in the pop-up window, select the folder where you want to save this and then give it a name that means something to you and then just uh, save uh, these settings and then uh, if you want to uh, reuse them uh, simply uh, just to bring back uh, that folder bring up that folder where these settings are saved and then just drag and drop these settings into the fusion page and now these nodes are ready for you to use again to create your fusion effect so yeah fusion composition clip is a fantastic tool to use if you want to start compositing from scratch in the fusion page lastly we have fusion clip which is very similar to a fusion composition clip but the key difference here is that it's not readily available for us so what we have to do is to use the actual clips in the timeline and then stack them on top of one another and then select those clips and then uh, we're going to right click and in the menu uh, select a new fusion clip so now, as you can see, these clips will be turned into a single fusion clip, very much like a, a compound clip. And if we take this a fusion clip into fusion, one interesting thing you're going to see is that the background and the foreground is already configured for us using those clips that we just used uh, in the timeline. So as you can see, uh, fusion clip is not typically used as a placeholder like fusion composition clip. And it also allows us to configure the foreground and background compositing using the actual clips in the timeline on the edit page. Now, one last thing I want to mention here is that uh, uh, a fusion clip is very much like compound clip in the sense that the moment you create a fusion clip, it is going to be saved as a separate clip in the media pool. And what that means is that you can easily reuse this fusion clip by simply dragging it from the media pool to the timeline. Now, another thing I want to mention here is that uh, you can also easily edit the content of uh, the original clips that make up the fusion clip. So let's right click this fusion clip and then select open in timeline. Uh, this will open up a separate tab and where you can make changes, where you can adjust the original clips. And once you're done, you can just uh, double click timeline one. This will take you back to the original timeline. And if you go to the Fusion page, you can see that these changes are also immediately applied as well. Okay, now one last thing I want to touch on is that unlike Compound Clip, we cannot decompose Fusion Clip. So in case Control Z uh, does not work anymore, you can right click and then select Open in Timeline. And then here you will just have to copy these clips and go back to the original timeline and paste them there. Okay, guys, so I hope this tutorial helps. And as always, I will see you next time.